If you're a web designer or a landing page optimization specialist, then you've probably already heard the news that Markup.io has yanked their free tier and the reaction has been heated. So let's go and take a look at why they've done this, my opinion on the price as it stands now, and what exactly Markup is and what it does, and if there are any alternatives out there that are just as good. So a quick introduction to Markup. It's a website feedback and collaboration tool that allows clients to leave comments, voice notes, attachments, and track revisions all in one place. It's super useful for client communications and has certainly saved me a bunch of time and certainly made the feedback process compared to using emails or phone calls or Zooms or WhatsApp voice notes so much faster for me and for my clients. It's extremely convenient. You can see that within the free tier, I have access to at least five websites, and which is quite a lot to be building at once, which is great. And within there, I can have basically unlimited users come in and use it. The free tiers restrictions are pretty lenient and that is probably one of the reasons they've had to change. So if we check out the pricing now that they are getting rid of the free tier you can see for $79 a month which is about £60 we're going to be given basically unlimited usage monthly. So is this new pricing fair? So I'm in two minds about this because it's quite a lot more at $79 than it was for free and they were giving away a lot of value for free. However at $79 it's right at the higher end of what I generally pay out for software. I'm no stranger to paying for software. I've got a list here of things I pay for. Semrush, ClickUp, Calendly, Google Workspace, Magnific AI, which is an image upscaler, uh, Runway ML, which is AI video generation, ChatGPT, Claude, CapCut, Canva, the Adobe Suite, on and off, I'm off at the moment. I've got a Figma subscription. I'm paying for Squarespace add-ons and I pay for Raycast, which is a Mac launcher, probably actually one of my favorite tools in the whole world. Uh, and Eleven Labs for AI voice synthesis. Elfsight, which is another kind of website plugin tool. That's just the ones off the top of my head. And that comes to well over five, six, seven hundred dollars a month in tools. I'm a strong believer and happily pay for tools where I can trade my money to win back some of my time. And I think markup might fall into that definition. However, we need to look at some alternatives first, because if I can save some bread, I'd really, really like to do that. You just saw the list of <laughs> things that I'm paying out for. Here are the five that I've dug out that people seem to think are just as good. We've got Pastel, Rustle, Bugherd, Marker.io, and Atarim. So pricing-wise first, Pastel comes in at $29 a month for up to three canvases. The premium canvases essentially just means that they do not have, that you can stop comments and you can limit commenting and things like this, so, but otherwise there's unlimited ones. Uh, Ruffle comes in at monthly, three projects at once for $6 a month or $12 gets you basically unlimited projects. Bug herd pricing is slightly higher over at $41 a month. Now it does a lot more for that, it's $49 a month. It does a lot more than just websites, uh, but it's all quite useful. Marker.io comes in at $59 a month. That gets you unlimited feedback across five active projects only. And Atarim, Atarim comes in for two users, say, or one or two, let's say one user, $35 a month, two users, $45 a month for 60 active products. Now I have used all of these and I just want to spin through them and tell you what my experiences were like. So Pastel first, Pastel was slow. Uh, it got there eventually, same as markup, but sometimes pages were taking five to six minutes to load. Now I only tried for a half an hour, got a bit frustrated with it and left, but that's just not an experience that I ever had with markup. Ruttle was the closest experience I had to markup. As you can see, I, it, there's not everything's loading on this page that I'm running with. It was quite simple to leave comments and browse and, and leave feedback within the experience and then see all of that over here. So it felt like the most similar to markup, but certainly not as snappy. Bugherd, Bugherd I really struggled to get off the ground. It required a Chrome plugin to use or for you to put some code directly into the header of every foot or footer of every website that you're going to be using it on. I found the whole experience just kind of frustrating and I could never really get it working. And considering it started at $49 a month, I just wasn't motivated to carry on because I'd rather pay the extra $30 a month to get to back to markup. Marker.io had really, really similar scenario here. Couldn't quite get it working. It wanted Chrome plugins installed, which I did. I just pictured myself sending all of these instructions off to a client and realizing that it was just too much work compared to markup. And considering the cost, which was back over at $60 a month to start with for three users and only five active projects, I'm only $20 away there from just coughing up for markup. And Atarim was quite cool as well. It, again, it required a Chrome extension, at least if you wanted to get everything ready. You could then share a link to something similar to Markup where it's a, it's a link with your website loaded under the UX, but then your 
client would still be invited to install a Chrome plugin, which for me just starts to scare people off. I found once I started to use it, it was quite cool as well, but things started to go a bit whizzy around the edges. Not bad anyway, but again, it just wasn't quite as smooth as what I'd experienced with what I'd experienced with markup. I found it had a ton of features that I just worry sending off to clients is gonna get them a little bit annoyed and a little bit overwhelmed and fine. Although it was overall fine, it still definitely wasn't a smooth non-boarding experience as it was to just stick with markup. And it's cost us $45 a month to get going. I just, again, think I'd rather just stick with something that I know and is fast and seems to behave better and easier and more snappier with markup. So what's the conclusion here? I didn't really think this would be a pro markup video. I thought we were a little bit scandalized by this huge price hike and I expected to go and find alternatives that were just as good and I haven't. Now, I know I've rushed. I wanted to get this video out fast and I spent probably less than 15 minutes per alternative tool to get things up and running. But within the first 15 minutes using markup, I'd already sent out like three bunches of websites for feedback to clients and they didn't have to install any third parties. They loaded fast and it was simple enough, bare bones enough that it got the job done for the clients. It didn't overcomplicate things. I know some of these tools are built to not just collect website feedback, but I was actually quite surprised to find markup so far improved over the experiences with those five other tools. So what's going on here? I think markup probably has a conversion rate issue. They've got too many free users gumming up the bandwidth, potentially taking up support issues, and they probably are pushing to get some monthly recurring revenue through the door. That's the lifeblood of a software as a service company. Do I expect there will be a lower tier coming in for entry level to give people more of a chance to test it for one entire project? Probably. I just feel like $75 a month is the kind of premium pricing that you genuinely find on much more enterprise level bits of software. Um, SEMrush, I pay a couple of hundred pounds for, probably the equivalent of around 300 plus dollars a month. But that's a tool that has a lot of value. And I've been walked up to that price over the years by adding more projects in, by tracking more keywords, by doing things that just is now invaluable to me. So coming in at $75 off the bat with no free trial, or you know, a free trial that won't be long enough to get a project off the ground and approved seems risky. Anyway, they've made a great tool as we've just seen me trying to find the alternative. So I can only wish them the best of luck. I almost certainly am gonna carry on paying for it and just put down that cost as a cost of sales as an expense within my accounting software. Because yes, I also pay for accounting software, which the price has also gone up over time because I've seen the value in it. Let me know your thoughts. What are you gonna do now? Are you gonna try some of these? Am I just completely wrong on some of these alternatives? Are there some other alternative website feedback collection softwares that I've just not even touched on? I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks very much for watching.